Good evening. Um, I'm Constantine, and I work for a small company that produces lasers that you shoot into the night sky to create artificial stars. Now you may be wondering, okay, but why would I want to do that? And so, imagine you're an astronomer, and all the objects of your heart's desire are out there in space, but you're stuck here on Earth inside the atmosphere. And the atmosphere is great because it means we can just breathe without having to wear spacesuits at all times. But it also means that you cannot get sharp images of your favorite galaxies. And so you look up there, and every, everything you see is just a bit blurry, and maybe you know something's hurtling towards you, you just can't really tell. Why is everything so blurry up there? Well, let's say we're looking at the, uh, the birth of a new binary star, and the light from this cosmic pretzel paint, it travels, to, it travels through the vacuum of space for years and years and years, minding its own business, nothing ever happens to it, until, on its last 100 kilometers or so before it reaches your telescope, it encounters the atmosphere. And the atmosphere, well, it just jumbles up all that light, and by the time it gets to your telescope, it's a right mess. And so, what do you do? Well, first thing is, you build your telescope on top of a mountain, you get a little bit closer to the stars, a little bit less atmosphere to contend with, and it does improve things, but it's really not quite enough. But luckily, astronomers are quite a clever bunch, and so they came up with this technique called adaptive optics, um, that somehow allows you to compensate for the effect that the atmosphere has on the light on its way through. Um, so how does that work? Well, the light coming from whatever you're looking at, it gets jumbled up by the atmosphere, and then it gets reflected when it reaches your telescope by this thing called a deformable mirror, and we'll come back, come back to that in just a second. It then travels to the beam splitter, and the beam splitter, it does what it says on the tin, it splits the beam, and uh, <laughs> part of it travels to a thing called the wavefront sensor. Now that's just a special type of detector that can measure what the atmosphere does to the light on its way through the atmosphere. And that information is then fed into a computer that calculates in what way the deformable mirror has to change its shape in order to compensate for the effect of the atmosphere. And so the light that is transmitted by our beam splitter is corrected before it reaches your camera and you can get sharp images. This technique works extremely well, so before you upgraded your telescope, this is what an, a photo of Neptune would have looked like, basically just a blue blob. And now, with adaptive optics switched on, you can make out features on the surface. And essentially, if we can get sharper images, we can learn more about what we're looking at. Um, there's just one little problem with this technology. And that's that the, uh, the special detector that I was telling you about, the one that measures what happens to the light on its way through the atmosphere, it's very light-hungry, meaning we can only really use this technology when we're looking at something that's really, really bright. And it turns out that even most stars just aren't bright enough to, to feed our detector. And so, remember in the beginning when I told you that I worked for a company that produces lasers that you shoot into the sky to create artificial stars? Well, this is where we come in. And you point, uh, you get one of those lasers, or four in this case, and you bolt them to your telescope, shoot them into the night sky, and now you can create an artificial star that's bright enough for your detector to work whenever you need it, wherever you want it. And um, how does that actually work? Well, it turns out that in 100 kilometers altitude, so right at the outer edge of the atmosphere, there's a whole bunch of sodium atoms flying around. And when we hit them really hard with a powerful laser, they get excited. And when they're excited, they emit light. And that's our guide star that we can use for our detector to run. And um, the results, they're pretty similar. So if you use a laser guide star or a natural guide star, the result is pretty much the same. You get sharper images, whether you're looking at Saturn or satellites. Um, that's up to you. And so why, why is this important? Well, I think firstly, it allows us to learn more about, um, about our universe and to satisfy our natural curiosity, and for that, we need sharper images. Um, secondly, there's more and more um, satellites circling our Earth, but at the same time, unfortunately, there's more and more space rubbish flying around out there, and this isn't more satellites, this is just the additional space rubbish produced by a single collision of two satellites in the year 2009. And a lot of these um, satellites, they're responsible for flight safety, for GPS navigation, for weather forecasting, so we really do want to keep them safe. And in order to do that, we need to be able to uh, properly map and get sharp images of what's going on up there. And thirdly, there's a whole bunch of asteroids and comets and stuff flying around up there. And with adaptive optics, well, hopefully we can get more news like this. Um, but on a more serious note, if we, can, um, if we can determine the trajectory of these bad boys with uh, high accuracy, then we will be able to predict 
future collisions between them and us, and hopefully we'll be able to do something about that. And um, for that, we need sharper images. So thank you very much for your attention.